I'm going to do today is we are going to have Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch take over and, and teach these guys uh, some incredible. I'm just enamored by your beauty. How small is this shirt? <laughs> well, it's Mona, so you didn't have a shirt this morning. So you probably would have heard. Thanks, Appreciate it. Um, we're going to have Mark kind of work with the guys. Some of the guys that I train with have such long legs. And so one of the big things for you tall guys is uh, proper deadlift form. Do we have any shaved legs in the group? Uh, <laughs> um, anybody else? <laughs> so today, really pay attention. We both got Mark here and Harvey's here from TMZ. So whatever Mark does wrong, us. he'll put out there today. <laughs> so it's a good combination. Um, but pay attention to what he's saying uh, and, and the points to this. This is incredible powerlifting stuff. He's around the best of the best. And not just in the United States, he's around the best in the world. So really take notes on these little tricks. Keep it real simple. You got three things to try to remember. You want to try to keep your back flat. You want to keep your stomach tight. As he was saying, he brought his belt. That's two things, back flat, stomach tight, and get your hips lower than your shoulders. And that goes for all, that goes for both styles of deadlift, whether it's conventional or sumo. Talk to me about head position. Uh, How you like head position. Yeah, that was, uh, that was something to work with, with uh, Todd. Because Todd was getting down real low and he was trying to keep his head up at the same time. Um, you know, when you're doing uh, these deadlifts, it can be a little confusing on how to organize your body and how to, how to really get the proper leverage with a deadlift. Sometimes you have people that have really good mobility and they can get down super low to the bar, but sometimes it's still not in your best interest to get super low to the bar because a lot of times the first thing that moves sometimes is your butt, sometimes it's your hips. We'll have uh, Encima demonstrate with a conventional deadlift. And you see, if he just squats down as low as he can possibly go, he'll lose some tension on the bar, and you'll see his hips will come up before the bar ever leaves the ground. You like to drive the hips up a little bit first. Like drive the hips up and round like over a little bit. bit more. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so the hips will come up, and then he'll kind of table tap it here, and the shoulders and the hips will be in line with each other, or the uh, shoulders will even be lower than where the hips are. And for a real deadlift, you want your hips to be lower than your shoulders. So he's going to drive, he's going to bend his knees, and he's going to flatten out his back, and he's going to drive with his hamstrings and with his butt, and he's going to drive the weight up off the ground. And see how he's got a neutral head position. Part of the reason for the neutral head position, part of the reason why we're not trying to look up too much, is a lot of times that ends up uh, kind of overarching the lower back. Go ahead and try it again. You want a neutral head, and then as he goes to lift, once the weight gets to about knee level, he'll throw his head back behind the barbell. And he has like a 27 pound head, so that'll help you lock the weight up. If you take a look sumo, he executes sumo deadlifts really, really well. You're gonna see this big old stuff back here, which I don't even know. Look at these things. Come over here, Mona, look at these things. Look at those, look at those. Shirt off. Look at those lats, Shirt off. right? <laughs> So you're gonna see as he goes to pull, he's gonna engage the lats and keep the weight real close to him. He's gonna flatten out the spines and drive the hips down. And see how the weight floated off the ground? That's how you know that you're getting tight. Ed Cohn, the greatest power lifter of all time, when he would do that, he was able to make 700 pounds hover off the ground before he ever even initiated his pull. Give you an idea how much tension you should really be getting on there. Pull the slack out of the bar, we call it. You wanna to try to get some of that tension before you go. Um, and then I'll work with a bunch of these guys for today and, and see what the form looks like and see what we need to fix and see what looks good. You really want your knees to travel forward very much, if at all. You want your shin angle to be straight up and down. So go ahead and uh, lift it again. What I would have him do is go ahead and bring your hips up higher. Bring your hips up higher. Yeah, grab it, grab it. And now we have to, so you're, when you brought your hips up higher, your background, so we need to flatten the back out. And you're just gonna pull right from there. That's it. The shorter range of motion. There we go. I just I just changed his whole life in like five seconds. <laughs> changed his whole world. <laughs> yeah, the hips. My world feels that's very right. changed. That's right. See, he awesome. feels he even feels different. <laughs> his new man. His hips were uh, lower than his shoulders still. So bring the hips up, and if you have to bring them up to a point where you're 
your hips are higher than your shoulders and we're not in a good spot because we're going to be bent over too much. But that was perfect. Long legs. Long legs. Um, Daddy long legs. Yeah. One of the things he's going to be doing is showing you power lifting. It's just that perfect form, bone stacking and, and muscularity. Uh, the shortest range, in a sense, to get the most weight um, and proper. I'm going to show you a little different on one thing that I always look back at and all those days that I was just exploding. I want to lift heavy, heavy head yeah. and get all that weight. And then I found out in the last two uh, years, years. Uh, in the last seven days, <laughs> uh, in, the last, in the last 10 is there was a, I was missing an opportunity to develop something. In there. And you know that I like to, uh, if we're going to go heavy or moderately heavy for me, um, I want to get both aspects of it, not just the single, but also something that looks good. So I changed my form just a little bit for more isolation at the same time, instead of just explosion. So like Dorian took the bent over row and changed it for what he wanted. Yeah. And at first everybody goes, ooh, oh, that's, that's terrible form. And he built the biggest, best and back. He, and he body building pretty much. <laughs> so, crazy, terrible form to everybody doing it. Right. And he was such ahead of his time. And that's what I noticed with my, my thickness in the back and the development in the back by changing my form from deadlifts going, because we only get ready for a powerlifting meet and you can do that in 12 weeks and all that, but what are you doing the rest of the time? So I said, well, the rest of the time I'll try to develop and fill both, right? Move a little slower, more deliberate. When I, when I was just watching Mike go just now, his arms were bent and the weight was uh, like, quote unquote, sitting into his back muscles, sitting into his lats meaning he have had it uh, curled up a little bit in here, but he also had his uh, lats engaged, just like he was doing a row, just like you're saying, a bent over row. And when I've had people in my gym do that, I've had Stan Efforting come to my gym, and Stan Efforting deadlifted uh, 832 in a, in a competition. A lot of my guys, when they saw that at first, they were like, he's gonna tear a bicep. And I was like, he's not gonna tear those biceps. <laughs> I'm like, those are different biceps than the rest of us have. And so some people get scared when they see the arms being bent a little bit, but it is a good way to initiate uh, getting a good line of pull all the way from your fingers all the way into your lats. You might want to try it. I mean, try it with lighter weight first so you get the idea of it. Uh, I'll demonstrate in a little bit, a uh, little, little bit more about what I'm talking about. But basically, you want to try to take a, a barbell, a straight bar, and you want to try to turn it into a trap bar. I think a lot of you guys and girls that are watching right now understand that when you use a trap bar, it, it feels a lot easier to deadlift with a trap bar, right? A lot of you might lift more weight with a trap bar. So take a regular bar and try to bend that thing around your body. The only way to do that is to engage the lats. These uh, pullover motions right here, like these guys, these are great to kind of feel the way a bench press should feel in your lats, the way our squats should feel in our lats, and the way our deadlift should feel in our lats. You pull down and in. When we're here and we're deadlifting, we don't want to deadlift out here, right? Because what's going to happen when you go whoop, like this, right? We're going to have this big gap here. We want all that closed off. So how do we close it off? We go, how do we get a, maybe a slightly better feel for it? You may want to try to bend the arms just a little bit, get a little bit of a curl in there. And again, just do it with the lighter weight so you get a feel for it. But as you're watching Mike uh, warm up here, you're going to see that he's not only deadlifting with his butt and his hamstrings and his lower back, He's also using his lats as well, so give it a try. Most of the year <laughs> is better for me, and then if I go into powerlifting training, then I'll speed it up again. I can try to go there. If I'm always training in that speed motion where you're just exploding, I don't get as much development in the body. So the one thing I did now... So it doesn't slow you down at all, because I think that's a misconception. A lot of power just think if I move slow, I'm going to always be slow. And the one thing that I've found is coming to a complete stop and restarting. Here's one thing that they always say, if you train fast, you'll be fast. No athlete trains fast in the sense of the game. It is from ground zero to 100. The wrestler goes from nothing to shooting. The football player comes off of a ball, boom. And that's what I'm trying to work on. And they on. do a lot of practice where they go slower. The coach says, hey, do that drill and go at 50%. Right when they see it at 50% speed or something like that, right? So today, 50%. Your brother makes sense. Get around that booty. Okay. 
you see the arms are bent here. It's kind of loading it into the lats. And hey, it's not bad for the traps either, right? As you can see the back muscle working right here. So I'm a little bit leaned forward in a sense for all you. Pressure's on. This is so good right now. And I'm pulling back. This is so good because Ed Cohn, one of the greatest power lifters of all time, 901 pound deadlift at 220. When he does his rows, he does exactly what Mike just showed. So I love how this is like, it's, it's the same thing said differently, maybe in some different ways from, from different people, but it's all the same shit. That's crazy. I did not know he did that. Because so he, he does a row, his bent over row, he'll kick it out in front of him a little bit, but then he'll squeeze and pull the exact same way that you just pulled your shoulder blade. So I'm basically doing a... So you're basically at home. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> Drop it for a second. No, no wait, stand up. So you're so strong in everything. Come from down here, squeezing back. So it's stand up here. So, two right here. He's so strong. Yeah, I'm able to pick all this stuff. Touch him too? It's, yeah, I'm touching. Very so that contraction comes from the lower back, the lower lat, and squeezes in. So I want a little bit more from down here instead of just the traps. This is already developed. So how can we train everything? That's one of the key points is like you're isolating on stage. Okay. And what's great is, he looks awesome, so it'll be easy to see this muscle work. Another cool thing about him, he claims he's a natural too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, and see how he's leaning forward yeah. slightly? And that's gonna keep that weight and pressure on him. See all that shit. Yeah, look at this. Nice. Check, check the mirror, watch, watch the mirror. That's watch what I'm the saying. See, see that? Awesome. I feel what you're talking about there. First, Actually, when you put your rope down, it's like the front bodybuilding pose. So, come here, come here. Come yeah. Come here. So, tell us again what you were just going to say. Oh, yeah. The first uh, two reps that I did, I felt like when I was coming up, I, I, I came here into my traps where my rhomboids up there. The last two, exactly. Started here, and then I felt it all up through like, my lower lats and my back. Good isolation. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to say that's easy. Uh, the, the mind to muscle on this one is tough. It, 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 it's, yeah. Um, so take your time and again, go light. Go light to start with this stuff. Here's the great thing this exercise can be done light relative to your deadlift. Yeah. Try it with a plate first. Don't be scared to do that. This will be a lot of information today, just so you know. Because I'm going to continue to do this. As he's showing uh, my crew um, proper powerlifting form. Uh, and then we're also going to give you some stuff, not today, but another time. It has been so long. The last time I competed in powerlifting was 1995. So it was more than, it was before most of these guys were born. Um, so it's been a long time removed from me. And one of the things I used to, we didn't have back in 95 was bands and all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff. And so you're going to demonstrate bands in a future mm -hmm. sleepover. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but today, powerlifting 101 right here with Mark Bell. So as I was watching uh, Mrs. O'Tren over here uh, do her deadlifts, um, <laughs> hey, hey, settle down, settle down. Uh, she, was, she had really good back positioning, uh, but her hips were a little bit low and the knees were a little bit forward. So I just asked her to bring her hips In whose up opinion? Bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Deadlifts. Yeah, deadlifts. That's my, my bad. Bring, bring her ass up a little bit, and so, and then that way the shin angle is a little straighter, and it's a shorter line of pull. This is going to pull right from there. There you go. Good. You're going to force your knees out as you go to pull the weight. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and again, the reason for that is a lot of times I see the hips move first. And uh, that'll be kind of the first part of the motion. I see the hips go up first, and a lot of times when the weight's still stuck on the ground, and then we get rounded over, or our hips get a little higher than our shoulders, and uh, it just becomes really, really hard to lock the weight out that way. So just ask her to move her hips up a little bit. She's in a little bit better starting position, and it looks good.
knees, really watch uh, the head position, his back position, and that, that pull. It just a solid in a position, just boom, right to it. such a good job of, of forcing his knees forward of the bar now you just heard me say don't shove don't shove your knees forward of the bar but that's on a sumo deadlift he was deadlifting conventional right there and you do have to shove your knees forward of the bar not only were his knees forward but he did a great job of, of uh, really keeping the bar in a real straight smooth line so not only was he uh, driving the knees forward from the bottom but he's also getting his knees forward and they also weren't in the way of his arms he's got big legs and big arms when he bent down they weren't in the way of each other and I see a lot of lifters doing that most times I got to have lifters uh, change their stance or widen out their grip a little bit but his grip is uh, in perfect position and he's really well getting his hips down nice and low back staying flat and there's no um, there's no kind of faulty movements in there and a lot of that I think has to do with the way he's been training training slower staying attached to the bar throughout the range of motion lowers the weight you know like I've I, I very rare I very rarely see Mike even make like a, a squint or a wind on any of the weights and here with 405 which I know he's way stronger than 405 he's a lot of times I guess what I'm trying to say is he makes things look easy right now it's looking a little it's looking hard it's looking challenging and I think it's because he's making it that way so how hard was that to make the leap of like I don't need I don't need more weight I need to lift it better lift it differently the hardest thing, <laughs> the hardest thing, honestly, and it was a great point. I think you understand it, and you're you're wise enough to understand that the other things outside of lifting. Um, to do anything now uh, in the public eye when you're not 100 percent, it's a scary thing. <laughs> honestly, you put out a picture when you're a little off season. You don't look good. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, What's going on with the weights? Um, it's not that heavy. I can do that for 25. It was the idea uh, and the understanding that I can't keep putting it out in the sense of going off what they want. Right? It has to be what I want. It has to be beneficial for what I'm doing. And so when I talk about uh, exercises or put myself in weak positions, uh, you have to be able to go. They'll understand in time what I'm doing here. Uh, they'll understand, hey, maybe I'm depleted, I'm dieted down, maybe I'm weaker at this point. And you just got to be true to yourself on what's best. Uh, you know, they talk about ego lifting. It's, it's tenfold now. Yeah. Because, because mostly it's when... Social media. Yeah. It, it, step away from it if you can. It's a great point, though, man. It's, it's, it's one of, that's the hardest thing. I always uh, say in my gym, the greatest exhibition of strength I've ever seen is when the men and women at Super Training Gym take weight off the bar and they say, you know what? That's a little too heavy for what I'm trying to actually do today. Because it's not always about lifting more weight. A lot of times it's about, most of the time it's training, you know? So think about it, you're training. What is training? Training is practice. We're here to practice. And if we're gonna practice something, much like Mike has learned through martial arts, is you have to be really rigorous with how you execute stuff. So it's not lifting more, it's lifting better. And then in time, the, uh, the better you lift in your training, the more that you practice properly. Perfect practice. Perfect practice makes perfect, right? If we practice perfectly, we'll lift perfectly, even when the weights do get heavier. So when Mike puts 500 pounds, 600 pounds, it will look flawless when he wants to go back to that style of training. That's a great point, man. Well, well put. Well put. Hey, look out!
slower. So okay. good. What they'll do is uh, um, they'll take it to that mid position, hold, explode through, or in this case, just you just almost flex through. Um, I was trying to get a feel for what he was doing. I wasn't really uh, bending the elbow since I haven't tried it with this weight before. But I was trying to get a little extra squeeze at the top and trying to, I tend to be slow off the ground. So I was really squeezing the weight off the ground, trying to use more uh, muscle, try to recruit more muscle fibers. All right, you talked to me about a mindset. People, and, uh, it, people hate coming off the ground slow, which I love coming off slow because it will keep me in a solid position that regardless, if I can get off the ground in a proper position, I can finish the lift. Yeah. If I come off fast mentally, it's like, oh, okay, I'll try to swing it through. I agree with you to come off slow is such an incredible yeah, thing. Peel it off the ground, yeah. And then finish it. Be patient at the beginning. That's it's gonna good. take a I second for it to leave the floor, yeah. It does, that, that, that hey, moment. Um, have some trend water, they'll do it. Okay, I'll oh, take yeah, my trend yeah. water. <laughs> It's almost like having an advantage of like going like this. He's forcing his knee out so much. See, most people, a lot of times, when they try to force their knees out, they're kind of like here. But he was he was way in here. And that's like, I mean, that's really good mobility. He does jujitsu and stuff like that, so he's got good mobility from some of that. Plus, he stretches. Not many people want to do that, right? But he's in a much better position than most people get into. I don't move quite as well as that. Young whippersnapper. bar was riding his body the whole time and you maybe don't want to end up like this <laughs> but the bar does need to stay close to your legs uh, these uh, scars forever from deadlifting but keep those weights close to you if you don't want the scars and maybe wear pants but you got to keep that bar really close to you <laughs> One thing that Mark is saying is about taking the knees out that I continuously talk about. I continuously talk about taking these knees as far out as possible. That's what I would like you guys to do. And I know it's tough, but I would love you to work that. Pulling those knees out, not forward. First, sometimes when you try something new, you try something different, it might actually feel way worse. Even if it's somebody like myself who's been lifting for 30 years, or if it's like Mike who's been lifting for 40 years, you get somebody to give you advice and they say, hey, try this way. A lot of times right away it's gonna feel like crap, but it'll take a little bit to adjust. But that lift even looked better to me than the first one did, so good job, Serge. Time. 
more of a back movement than it is just a, it's not just a deadlift. You know, a lot of times, uh, a lot of bodybuilders will even finish their workouts with deadlifts. They'll do 12 or 15 sets of back, and then the last movement that they do is deadlifts. As a power lifter, that's really, really hard to even just try because right away it's going to take a lot of weight off the bar for you. So you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to do it that way, but give it a shot. Give it a try. Maybe you'll learn to engage some muscles that you've never felt before when you were deadlifting. I know for myself, I've never felt my lats on a deadlift. Not until I started doing them after a, uh, after a full back workout. So give that a shot. Come on, kid. Come on. Let's go, man. Sometimes people think that taller athletes are going to have a hard time doing a squat or a hard time doing a deadlift. Really where the taller athlete might run into some trouble is, is more so not in those two lifts necessarily, but more so on the bench. A lot of times a, a taller athlete, someone that has uh, long limbs, long legs, long arms, usually their torso is either short or short in comparison to their body, and therefore it creates actually a pretty good leverage for a deadlift. Tony has uh, long legs, pretty tall guy, but also a lot of times when you're a taller person, you got some larger digits to hold on to the bar, makes it a little easier. And if you can just like line up on the bar like you're about to pull, you're gonna see, go ahead and raise your hips up a little bit. So even when he was raising his hips up about to here, this is where the weight started to come off the ground. His hips are still at least in line or slightly lower uh, than uh, than where his shoulders are, which is still a good strong position. And on top of that, he was still keeping his back flat. The other thing is, go ahead and stand up. Just let your arms kind of rest. The other thing is, you're gonna end up with slightly longer arms usually when, you, when you've got an athlete that has longer limbs. And when you have longer arms, it creates a nice leverage because Tony might be kind of locking out here where I have to come all the way up here. And then it's like, well, where do you find an equalizer? Where can you, where can you make up ground? For me, I can make up uh, ground and bench press because I can have my kind of almost short, stubby looking arms because I built myself up to be thick to bench press well and I can take advantage of that. So when it comes to bench pressing, he's probably gonna have a hard time. When it comes to deadlifting, I might have to pull the weight up over my eggplant. <laughs> When you watch somebody like that deadlift, you see all the muscles firing. Now don't assume just because you're deadlifting that's happening. Um, he's taking his time, he's contracting, he's pulling, and he's got great mind and muscle. So if you can, and if you don't feel like everything is flexing through it, slow it down a little bit. Um, that way you get both aspects. Just what I love about this is that he's strong, he's stronger than I am, and he looks great. Um, but it's athletic built uh, that he can turn on, and I love this kind of uh, visual for me. 
because you're a combination of both. You're power into bodybuilder that you got the whole <laughs> superhero package. And it does not hurt that you're pretty, right? <laughs> so, you know, that goes hand in hand. Um, but again, guys, as you're watching, there's a difference between looking and seeing. And I hope today that you guys are actually seeing what's going on, not just looking and going, hey, they're deadlifting. It's two different worlds. some that we call pulling slack out of the bar. So get a good uh, pull on the bar before you start. It might feel harder, but you'll be able to do the entire range of motion a lot easier. So Robin, just check it out. It's like it's bending almost. Yeah, you want to get a good, you want to get a good pull started. Yeah. Pull some of that tension off the bar before you go. So maybe, like, think in your head, I'm gonna pull out around 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. You've got about 300 pounds of tension on, then you're like, okay, now I'm gonna go. Wow, okay. give that a shot. I love that. It's hard to make adjustments on the fly, especially with heavy weights, but you're gonna see him do it right here. I got confidence in him. <laughs> Don't be afraid if it takes a second. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard for lifters to understand sometimes because I think that we always think that we're going to get hurt the second our back rounds. But you're, when you start to get real heavy weights on, especially when you're doing a conventional pull, the back is going to be slightly rounded. We don't want the back to go from a rounded position to any further to get rounded over even more. We don't want to look like a fishing pole or like a dog shitting in the front lawn. We don't want to have our hips underneath us and our back rounded like that. But he let his back go just enough. There was enough uh, wiggle room there, and he got tension before he went. You saw, like that, to me, that looked a lot easier. Well, you feel. Yeah, because I could see, actually, the science makes sense. You take the tension off, and then, yeah. boom. Because the energy's lost in that bounce. I think you can do like a 600 pound deadlift. Try it. Maybe hey, we'll try it today. 700, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, why not? Why stop at six? <laughs> oh, you missed it. You missed it. My idol in my life and my, the biggest mentor in my life is my dad. But another person I really look up to, because he's taller than me. <laughs> there it's you not go. this guy right here, it's these guys up here. Arnold <laughs> Schwarzenegger, ladies and gentlemen. No, really do look up to Mike, admire him a lot. Coming here last year and training with him for a month. Uh, waking up at 2.45 and shoving down some uh, oatmeal and some eggs on my way to, the, to train with him uh, has really instilled a lot of discipline in me that I'm still utilizing now. I still wake up at 2.45 almost every day and uh, getting a little bit of food before I go hit the gym. And I'm thinking about him when I'm training a lot of times or I'm seeing his videos in the morning, just like many of you guys and girls out there watching these videos, getting hyped up, getting excited. Uh, we all need different uh, people to inspire us and motivate us and this is a guy I look to because this is Mr. Consistency right here. There's no one that's ever been inside this gym before. There's thousands and thousands of people that have come through here, maybe even millions of people have come through here. Most dedicated, most consistent guy there's ever been. Period. And he's on steroids. <laughs> for you to kind of do you, for you to do your own thing. This is hard right now to get into this group and guys got five plates on there. Other guys are getting excited and they're still going up, I think. It's hard to stay in your lane, but you have to because this is gonna be a long ass journey. And so 
while it does feel great to add weight and it does feel great to be stronger and to feel stronger, work on lifting the weights better and work on you and try not to worry about the person next to you. All right, all right. So uh, the one great thing, again, is please see what we're doing. Don't just look. Uh, we got about, what do we got, 15 people today? Everybody deadlifted different. Every body part was, every body style, long legs, short legs, uh, tall guys, short guys, all doing it different, um, all great today. Mostly with Mark overseeing everybody to do that today. But uh, we're gonna get a little nasty right now. You ready, pretty boy? Yeah. <laughs> come on now. Come on, come on. Let's go, see what you're after. He's got his belt on. on. Obviously, you can see his belt. Watch this backfire. Oh, Watch this backfire. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Whoa. Good work. Good work. Good work. Good work. Something you have that I love is uh, you're hanging out with Mark. Um, you're 26, but you have such a humble personality. <laughs> uh, and I love that. Thank you. And, and you're being around people that... Aren't can humble? teach oh. <laughs> <laughs> that aren't humble, but, but people that can teach you and you're willing to learn. Yeah, I can see you sucking up that knowledge and understanding everything. And today, you tried something different with my deadlifts, um, and it's just uh, you're gonna be successful. You got everything Thank there to make it in this. Just trying to take it all in, with you guys. You are though. Yeah, you're taking it in, like Bruce Lee said, man. Mikey, when the cup's too full. What does this do for you, having all these different people come in all the time? Uh, you, you train really fucking hard all the time. You're always going at it full blast, but you got people kind of gunning for you now. Like when you, when you keep inviting me in and you keep inviting these different people in, everyone's like, oh shit, like next month I'm training with O'Hearn, but you're just down here doing your thing all the time. And sometimes you might be dieted down or you might've trained five, six days in a row. What's that like? And why are you doing that to yourself? Uh, I love the battle. I'm a born gladiator. And, and I wake up at three in the morning wanting to get in the mix. You're a jiu-jitsu boy, so you kind of understand that. Yeah. I, I've been doing martial arts since I was nine years old, and it's one thing is, is there's nothing better uh, for me to um, physically, emotionally, mentally battle another man that's alpha, that, that that's, has everything, and, and go to battle, win, lose, or draw. It's fun to go to, it's yes. fun to, go to war, and I love it at four in the morning because we don't lose any of the day, we get it in, uh, and, and you guys make me better. Mostly kids like this, man. This is, this is, this is great, guys. It gives you a lot of energy, huh? Yeah, I love this stuff, man. It's, I'm still that, four, and I know that you know this. I am still that 14-year-old kid walking in the gym every morning, smelling a baby powder and chalk as a power up in the gym. I still have that every single day I come in the gym. Baby powder, chalk, and Ben Gay. <laughs> That's the smell of the power lifting room right there. Yeah, so, man, it, like I said, it's not motivation, it's passion. I love this guy. I love it. Show us what's up. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You got this, Tom. You got this, kid. Look at that. Look at that. Boom. Sit back on it. Sit back on it. Finish it out. Finish it. Oh. Woo! Oh, yeah. But I can teach you how to do it. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tony just went for a 605 deadlift. It's a big jump, you know, just to go right from uh, right from five plates right to this. You know, it's more than a 90 pound jump. So this is going to be this is going to be a little bit tough, but he did get the weight to move. But when the weight gave him resistance and his back got out of place, he did a smart move and he discontinued the lift. And now he knows what he's up against. He's going to have a little bit better idea, a little bit better concept of what he's about to do. So on this next one, you have to really understand and you guys will see this, there's gonna be about a two or three second uh, count 
that you can count when he, when he pauses the weight, not intentionally pausing the weight, but he's going to get paused by the 605 deadlift. It'll be like one, two, it'll literally see, uh, feel and look to be that long. It'll be one, two, three, and then the weight will start to move and then he should be able to finish the lift. Looks like he's got the strength for it, so I think you can do it, buddy. How did it feel? Yeah, good. It's started, yeah. starting to feel pretty, pretty good. It gives you resistance. It gives you resistance. You gotta go like hell. Just move off. Let's go. Sit down. Sit Come on down. now. Come on. Take it off slow. Come on, you can do it. Thank you. Stay with us. Stay with us. So, so, to, so to bring this full circle and bring, bring this back around, the way that Mike was lifting today, lifting so deliberately, that will help transfer over and carry over into be able to, being able to stick a lockout like that. He wasn't able to lock the weight out, not for lack of strength. If we were to put this in the rack and, and raise the weight up a little bit, he'd be able to do this weight very easily. But what happened was, is because of the range of motion of the lift, he got out of position and he got out of position more and more and more as he was bringing the weight up. I felt it's, that when I came up there, I was looking up. Yeah, and so his back was like this, and even, he's got fairly long arms, and even with the long arms, uh, wasn't able to overcome the weight. So he's here like this, and you can't even, you can flex your butt as much as you want, which he was trying to do, but he was just kind of stuck here. And so by doing the weights, by somebody like himself, someone like Tony going back and working on deadlifting 405 properly, and 455 properly, and 500 pounds properly, and even doing a weight in between, like 545, taking your time with it, doing the weight very deliberately and doing it right. You won't get thrown in jail, and you won't go to hell if you do the exercise the right way. Take your time with it, learn how to do it, develop a real talent surrounding uh, knowing how to lift the weight. Don't always just try to lift more, try to lift the weight better. Good job today, man, that was awesome. Those tips really helped a lot. Feeling the tension on the bar. Yeah. I'm coming back in a second. Yeah, it's only 125 bucks. I'll send a bill. Thank you so much. <laughs>